I am going to talk to you about two fundamental defining factors of today's world. Exponential technologies and decentralization. Exponential technologies are those that surround us every day and that we know and we recognize because they come with our computers, smartphones, the Internet of Things that we are deploying all around. And the compounding power of these devices is surprising even to the experts. This is what we study at Singularity University, where I'm an advisor, a member of the faculty, and an investor. With funding from Google at NASA Research Park, we believe that in a deceptive phase, then disrupting industries, exponential technologies digitize, dematerialize, demonetize, and democratize technology. I love continuing the conversation with audiences like you, and I invite you to connect on the various social media platforms, asking questions, understanding how to go about, because humanity is co-evolving with technology. This has been going on for tens of thousands of years. When the Egyptians were building the pyramids, they had a given level of technology. And that level of technology allowed exactly one person to decide what to do. He was the pharaoh. And if he decided that he wanted a pyramid, that is what everybody else had to do and build for him. In the Middle Ages, started a process. Under Illuminism, it accelerated. The Industrial Revolution started to make more and more people able to design their own lives. And today, that is the global infrastructure that we are building to allow new degrees of freedom for everybody to decide how they want to contribute to society. As we map the world at an ever finer grained understanding, we are actually exploring ways of evolving and adapting to future conditions to build resilient communities that can adapt to rapidly changing conditions in the world. In the past, the best adaptation was that of centralized and hierarchical organizations. Nation states, enterprises, were built in order to tell other people what to do. And the better this was defined, the more efficient the organization seemed to be. But today, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, blockchain, and very importantly, the knowledge that this is possible is giving birth to a new generation of decentralized and distributed organizations. I'm not the only one seeing this. That decentralization is the next phase of our social economic organization is shared by inventors, investors, entrepreneurs around the world that are feeling excited, exhilarated with the possibilities. It is even felt by governments. They are feeling that their role and their relevance is diminishing in today's world. Their ability to decide for everybody else what should be done is not only um, lower than it has ever been, their authority is questioned because the uncertainty and the variability of the solutions in exponential times is increasing. And pretending that they are in a position where they know the answers, and that is the only position they can have, is hypocritical. 
That is why several years ago I established Network Society Research, that is a global think tank with representatives in over 40 countries and Network Society Ventures that invests in seed stage startups that lead towards this phase transformation. Network Society Lab advising projects and Network Society Media to make sure that as many people as possible understand clearly what is going on. The fundamental thesis under which we are operating is that widespread social economic phase transformation is only possible if there is a solid technological foundation to support it. If you dream of something, you can inspire a lot of people for some time, but after they wake up, the world around them is going to be still the same. However, today we are seeing globally distributed and decentralized technologies that are delivering superior results to centralized and hierarchical ones. And these are unstoppable. They are disrupting the supporting pillars of the nation state. And a new socio-economic organization is emerging that I call the Network Society. To illustrate that this is um, happening in a broad and deep context of which blockchain technologies are just a part, let me go through several simple examples. Solar photovoltaics is available all over the world. In more and more places, it is outcompeting every other source of energy. 3D printing and digital manufacturing is removing the centralized nature of production where value is not proportional anymore to the capital invested in the production lines themselves, but it accrues to the ingenuity and the creativity and the passion of the people who design the functionality and the value in the products. Urban gardening, vertical farming, indoor gardening, cultivated meat, all are pointing to a direction going away from industrial agriculture and food production. Personalized health is enabling anybody to achieve a deep understanding of their state of health and be responsible for it. Peer-to-peer -peer learning is what anybody can practice as they understand the potential of these technologies. There is nothing better than learning about the power of Bitcoin and blockchain from a friend and then be enthusiastic about it because a few minutes later you can set up an account, find a wallet, uh, transfer some value and do the same in a virally extending manner without recourse to a central authority that tells you this is what you should be doing. The ability to understand truth without having to resort to an imposed central source of trust is the fundamental innovation of blockchain. The first application, Bitcoin, for money and transaction and store of wealth and the other features that we have seen is barely a glimpse of what we are going to be able to do with blockchain applications as we move from the first experiments. Trust networks are establishing a new way of coexisting and achieving uh, the uh, joint rules of coexistence without resorting to the violence-based approach that is absolutely inefficient in current society. And of course, policymaking as well as the role of government and governance needs to also rapidly evolve in order to achieve a non-geographical and non-exclusive approach 
to participation in politically active manners to the society of the future. If you look at all of these changes and technologies around you, you realize that they are unstoppable regardless of how many articles are going to be printed in mainstream media denouncing one or the other as mere fads and fashions that are going to dissipate and disappear with the hype cycle. And the fact that this is happening is also demonstrated by an increasing alarm in the bureaucracies that resist change, pretending that they are protecting the unwashed masses that are too ignorant to be able to decide by themselves, to be informed they should rather be prohibited from taking action. They are hiding a state of panic because they are not able to read the future that must be understood by building it, by step by step understanding and experimenting in feedback loops that show what works. This is a kind of overreaction that they are going through where just like an immune system is ready to kill you if you are allergic to nuts and you want to eat a nut, the Federal Drugs Administration decided that all of you are too stupid to be allowed to uh, read the sacred text of your DNA just like the Vatican 500 years ago decided that nobody should be able to read the sacred text of the Bible when it was translated for others to get access to. New York City and the state of New York were the world capital of finance until they decided that it was more important to protect incumbent interests than not to make sure that the next wave of financial innovation would happen in New York. And they promulgated a bit license that drove dozens and dozens and dozens of startup out of New York in the blockchain industry. And this is fairly recent. Facebook and Google decided that no amount of money was worth trying to be smart enough to apply AI or algorithms or big data or whatever they are so proud of, they should better be beholden to the regulators that hold too big a stick over their head. And they cannot afford to find a way to allow a certain type of economic activity to be promoted on their, uh, on their platforms that is bulk labeled not worth it. And you can go to them with any amount of money and they are not going to take it. Or, as it happened a few years ago uh, in the island of Hawaii, where the local grid could not take additional solar electric generation capacity, and the decision was not that of rescinding the legislation that imposed interconnecting that capacity with the grid, it was to stop installing solar. The tragic consequences of not understanding how technology evolves and impacts the world is most relevant in how the International Energy Agency for more than 10 years insisted in the linear thinking of their predictions year after year saying the installed capacity of solar photovoltaics plateaued and is not going to grow anymore and they were wrong and then the year after they would say the same and they were wrong and they would persist and persist and persist year after year after year and since they are the central authority whose knowledge inspires everybody else. Policymakers, investors, individual entrepreneurs would refer to this faulty reasoning year after year after year. However, 
if they were only ready to listen, they would understand that if these changes are unstoppable, as indeed they are, there's no reason to panic because it is going to work out. We just have to reassure them. We just have to tell them, let's find a way. Because it is possible, and you are the demonstration, to get out of the cages of all type of thinking. There are no barriers in adopting these new technologies. There are only societies that decide that they want to be in the avant-garde of experimentation or that they decide that they'd rather be on the rear guard of experimentation. And the spectrum of these distributed decisions is what is creating in the blockchain world the opportunity for jurisdictional arbitrage that all of you are computing dynamically week after week as you are planning the token sales in the most welcoming region of the world. We have met people everywhere, and I can tell you, but you know that, passion, creativity, desire to positively impact the world are everywhere. They are universal, just as we want this powerful knowledge to be universally accessible to everybody. That is why we are building a decentralized platform so that knowledge can empower people. And this knowledge is going to be rewarded with the Network Society token that is going to accrue to people who learn and teach in order to free themselves and free others from the cages of old thinking. We are aligning our interests with projects like the Sun Exchange, Wealth Migrate, Neuromation, Shivom, and dozens of others in order to make sure that the tokens as well as the interoperability of our platforms enable people wherever they are to participate in this fundamental shift. And we are helping through the app projects to be verified so that the vouching of people in a decentralized global due diligence process can lead to investment that healthily moves them from the idea stage to the seed stage and beyond, overcoming the self-imposed limitations that Google and Facebook just recently decided would be their next now. I welcome you to keep up to date as we provide more information about how Network Society is going to impact the world and how we are going to empower the projects of our partners and beyond. The toolbox that we are creating is the basis for new organizations that empower and emancipate people that can experiment and learn in order to find purpose and dignity in their lives. The reason why the political process perversely incentivizes dogmatic and demagogic approaches is because too many of us do not feel that they have a role in the world of the future. But we all have that role. The only difference between dinosaurs and humans is that they didn't have telescopes. We don't even know if 7 billion people are enough to stop the asteroid that is there to start killing us. And we have no solution if we want to achieve that. Maybe 10 billion people would be needed and we allow the most precious resource that is the human brain to be squandered. We are able and we have the power to build communities that are inclusive, where the purpose of each indi individual is appreciated. And those who believe that artificial intelligence is a threat are profoundly misguided. They are going to be coming on our side as allies because the real enemy against AI and human together are the dumb machines. The simplest example is self-driving cars. 
If you go to a kindergarten, nobody will say that their purpose in life is to drive a truck for the next 50, 60 years. And we have to take care of the truck drivers that are going to be replaced by self-driving trucks. But pretending to slow down the spreading of self-driving cars and trucks means condemning to early death a million people per year and more. And there is hopefully no politician that, given that choice, is going to choose death against life. Human talent is not an externality. The current social contract that says your value to society equals your economic output, which in a very natural syllogism also means that when your economic output goes to zero, you are worthless to society is inhumane and unacceptable. But luckily, the social contract is not a natural law. Under pressure, it will break. And we have to find a new one to replace it. Hardware, software, algorithms are going to enable us, together with the creativity and ingenuity of people, to really start and dream big. We have seen nothing yet, and we are going to build this new world together. Thank you very much.